What's up? It's Sunday. Welcome. First episode of Sunday, whatever day, kind of, I'm going to throw some art and some other little side projects and stuff on this section because it all comes together in the big picture, kind of trying to build my brand, Speed Demon Design under Project 253, which is the channel. And so today, getting right into it, what we're going to look at is how to wet sand and polish. Now, I didn't do this with the proper tools, but this is what we're working on. It was a Christmas present, so I couldn't show it off until now, but uh, Airbrush the longboard. This is for my brother, designed by his girlfriend, and it's his gift for Christmas. So by the time you see this, he's already gotten it. I hope you enjoyed it. So let's get into it. So this is the board we're starting with. I didn't film painting it, it's for a Christmas gift and since we're after Christmas, well I can finally show it, but let's get a good look at the lighting here. Now you see that ripple effect that's going on? A little wave there. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna polish this up, try to make it look flat, like a mirror. Here you can really see it too. There's a lot of texture on that clear coat. The idea behind wet sanding today is to get rid of that. There's no copyright. What's going on today is we got a wet sand. It's Sunday, a nice chill day, just something relaxing to do. I'm gonna throw some music on and get to work. But I'm gonna show you guys how it's done. What you need for this wet sanding is, well, you need paper. I got a thousand grit here, should be pretty good. I'm gonna sand it down. Now there's a trick to sanding stuff to make it flat, to make it straight, to make it smooth. Uh, you always gotta work in like an X pattern. That makes sure you get everywhere, every crossway, whatever. You can even like change that X pattern and do like a plus pattern kind of thing, but you wanna make sure that you cross everything and don't just sand in one direction the whole time because that's what's gonna create like weird grooves and valleys and stuff like that. You're gonna wanna block. You need some something flat. The real secret to making things straight and smooth is to use something flat with your sandpaper. No matter what the grit you're using, if it's 80 or 8,000, you need this. You, you think you could do it by hand or whatever and it looks good, but you clear coat that and you put it up to some light, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So that's the trick. Block, sandpaper, get to work. Now, just like the name wet sanding, it's gotta be wet when you sand it. So you're gonna wanna put some sort of solution on that. You could use water, but what I'm gonna use is uh, water mixed with a little bit of soap solution. It's biodegradable, totally environmentally friendly and stuff like that. But the idea is just to get it a little bit of lubricant so when that you're passing your block and your sander over it, it doesn't dig too deep. You don't wanna put any real pressure into it. You wanna let it work itself out. The flat piece as it goes will take off all the high spots, keep going until there's no more high spots, basically. And then this keeps everything moving right. If you don't really use this, then you know it could like all of a sudden start grabbing and that's when you know to put a little bit more on. So I'm using this in a spray bottle so I can cover a big section because it's not a big thing that I'm sanding. So I can kind of like just miss the whole thing and get to work. And that's what I'm gonna do. Break on that beat, going crazy.
if you look at where we sanded in the light, get the reflection properly. Okay. See these glossy spots that are showing up? Little lightning bolts going through there. That's the spot that's still high. You can tell by the texture. On this side, look, there's a little bit more of that. It's a little more wavy. Let's dry it off a bit here. You can see in the haze what's left, like there, for example. See that texture that's still there? All the dull spots is the high spots. The glossy ones is where the sanding didn't get to. So that means we still gotta go dig deeper. wet sanding it with the block multiple times, continuing X patterns using 1000 grit sandpaper. I cleaned it off many times and wiped off all the water and all the spray that I put on it just to make the sandpaper slide nice and easy. Like this I can see in the light if there's any kind of low spots or anything else after sanding over and over and over again, getting those out best I could without actually cutting through the clear coat and getting into the initial design which was kind of rough in some spots to be honest with you. Then it was time to start the polishing process. Now, before we get started, I know that I'm not using the right compounds and I'm not using the right tools for this job, but it's all I have right now in shop and it's all I have here. So I use what I can to make what I don't. So this will have to do and it's gonna be much quicker than sitting there polishing it by hand because that would just take a couple hours. And right now at the time of filming this, I gotta package this thing up tonight, wrap it because tomorrow morning it gets delivered and unwrapped. So I treat the polishing part with this tool a lot like when I'm doing the spray and laying it down. I do big, solid, nice sweeps, keep it nice, smooth, steady the whole time. Try not to stay in one spot too much because you could potentially, I guess, over polish that one spot. It'll look more polished than everywhere else and that's kind of weird. And also too, if you get really, really too hot, it can start to mess up the finish a bit and you don't want that. You don't want to dig in too deep. You don't want to get into your initial design. You just want to take off that little thin layer of clear and polish it nicely. So compared to the wet sandpaper, what the polishing thing is doing is the inside the compound, there's very, very fine particles and that kind of acts as a sandpaper. So as you're rubbing that around, it kind of takes care of all the little scratches and all the little imperfections that you had left over from the job that you just did. Woo. Last step is taking some clean cloth and wiping it off. I often change the direction of the cloth and flip it around very often to keep everything that kind of, you want to get that wax and everything out of there and make it stick to it and clean everything up. You can tell that it's clean because there's no more haze left. When you still have a wax or a compound kind of dried over top of your surface, it looks a little hazy, a little cloudy. Try rubbing that good with something clean, some sort of fabric that's gonna pull off the haze coat of the wax or whatever you call it and uh, you can really see a difference as you go so I just keep cleaning and keep changing the rag and keep cleaning and turning it and keep cleaning and eventually you end up with a nice polished product. At the end, there's still a bit of a wave in it, but now you can see much more detail, it's much flatter. You can actually almost see the individual LEDs in the light strip there. If it'll focus enough, there we go. So that's pretty much final product. 
despite not using really the proper tools or products at all. But for a job homemade, it's pretty cool. Hope my brother likes it. All said and done, putting the wheels back in. Unfortunately, I noticed that the tape didn't really hold, didn't really do its job, so there's a little bit of leak through on the sides of the board of the white that I used for the initial base of the board, as well as a couple leaky spots that came through the holes where you gotta put the bolts and the screw to hold the trucks onto the board. So that kind of sucked and it made it a little rough to get the screws and actually every, all the hardware back in through the board because the paint had seeped through. But I got it in, tightened it all up, and once again, it's a long board, ready to be packaged up and delivered. Thanks for watching dudes. Over the next few weeks we're gonna go over some stuff that I painted previously that I actually did record like this and the other stuff. I have a Speed Demon Design YouTube channel but to concentrate on two channels at once is just too much especially when the idea, the plan is to make these two things collide, come together and all these other things that are on this channel. So we're just gonna drop it all in one spot and document the process of what I'm trying to do here. Is so thanks for sticking around we'll see you next week uh, we're gonna start from uh, painting some murals and stuff like that and eventually get to maybe we're gonna airbrush that one day <laughs> anyway peace